Hello room, we are live. So um, I'm gonna start looking into Okay, here we are. It's four o'clock and we are here. Um, it's everybody here. Who do we have? Okay, I am waiting for, uh, we were able to get the experts here and I'm not seeing the attendees. Uh, the room is empty. Oh, nine. We just have a couple of attendees. Hello guys and girls, Marie, David, Danielle, Kathleen, Edgar. People are coming in. Hello, California. Marie from California, how are you? We're here in cloudy New York. Thankfully, it's not raining. We've had a few, uh, a bit of rain. I am waiting for the lovely experts to get in. We were able to um, get permission and authorization to get them here. And we have Alexina from San Francisco. Hola, Alexina. I'm pronouncing your name my Spanish way. And we have Maria Luisa out of one of our experts, and she is in Chile at the moment, but she's very international. I'm waiting for her to settle in so that I could click on her and she could say hello to you guys. You settled in, Di Maria? All right, there you are. You're on camera right now. Uh, just a moment. Okay. So, um, what is the difference between Airbnb recommend the prices and beyond pricing? Oh my God, we're already starting with the question. Marie, I did receive your questions and I forwarded them to the team. Um, let me see. Yes, uh, what is the best way to source for finding out about co uh, convention and business events coming to an area? And what is the best way to send a group email blast to a previous guest about property updates? What do you think of the new Elizabeth pricing suggestions? I know I, I'm having issues with that pricing suggestion thing. And we could talk about um, about it in a little bit. Um, actually, let me ask you guys a question. We were thinking, I was thinking about doing a webinar with some of the guys from Beyond Pricing or Method Pricing, one of the many companies that are doing a bunch of um, information and webinars and things like that. Um, will you be interested in hearing from one of them or, or you know, like to um, do anything like that? And if you are interested, please say yes. The July webinar is going to be all about something that I'm creating specifically for hosts. It's a little product. And I will talk more about it during the month, but I'm creating something that my guests talk about in all the reviews. They love it. They really praise it. It's very, very helpful and something that will help you as a host. Oh my God. <laughs> How do you handle all these extra towels and sheets? You do tons of laundry. Look, I, I tend to leave in each. Um, yeah, so basically you had two adults and two children. So that's four, and each one used two towels. How long were they there? And I cannot pronounce your name, Hanalur? Um, the, the towels and, and sheets issue, it's huge. Look, um, I, had, I just had guests, I was away for a couple of days and I had guests in one in my private apartment. They used every washcloth and because they, I only leave like four, they went and used all of the kitchen towels and I had like four of them. And I was like, what the hell, how much? And there was only like four people and for just a few days. So I, I was really surprised about how many, how much towels and, and, and things like that people use. But what I normally do is I make sure that I leave one set of towels on their bed and another set in their bathroom, which is where I, I stash any extra towels. And, I'm, and it's just one extra towel per person. And sometimes I come in and they use them all. It's just the way of the beast. We just got another person that um, walked into the room, which is Lou, one of our other experts. And we are waiting for one more for Mark. Hopefully he'll sign in soon and we could start our webinar. 
So, in the meantime, um, Louise, do you want to tell us anything about you guys? Can you hear me? Oh, yes, Lou. Hi. Okay, good, good. You are heard and you're here and um, you're a lovely place. Thank you so much for joining us. So, oh, thank uh, you for having us. <laughs> yeah, it's it's my pleasure. Right now we have about twenty people um, already in the room, and I am very thankful. So let me start my my little disclaimer um, of um, this is not an Airbnb sponsored event. Airbnb knows about me. We had Chip Conley from Airbnb last month. Uh, Wendy, it's starting now. <laughs> Um, Kimberly, why don't you st um, make sure that it's – does anybody else hear me? Um, I don't know why everybody is saying – people are saying that they cannot hear me, the, my, all of my stuff is on. Lou, can you hear me? I can hear you perfectly. All right. So, Christy, Wendy, just confirm that you're good. Um, I cannot neither. I cannot hear anything either, Kimberly. Um, I'm gonna say restart. You know, go back and put your um, restart your browser and and see if you could get back in. All right. Uh, but I don't put more than one tower per paying guest in the room. Okay. Let me just. We're gonna get to the questions um, later on during the the webinar. This is about a half an hour webinar because it's, it is for free. Um, we have some experts that work for a company that answers your questions. Whenever you ask you ask a question to Airbnb and you send out an email to them, um, they're the ones that actually answer you. If they, they cannot answer your questions or it's something that needs a, a higher up, then it gets escalated. Um, I've had actually some of them answer some of my questions, um, not them specifically, but the company that Airbnb hires to answer them, they are hosts as well. Um, they've been hosting for, for a long, long time. In the moment, we have Lou um, out of Queens, and he shares um, with his guests. And then we have Maria Luisa out of Chile, and she has numerous listings in numerous parts of the world, um, amazing traveler, and anything else. Please, um, Lou and Maria Luisa, if you guys can introduce yourself for a minute. Yes, I'm Maria Luisa. <coughs> I'm Brazil. Sorry, I'm, I have a cold, so I have, might cough, cough a little bit. Uh, I am Brazilian, married to a German guy. I live in, in Chile right now. Uh, my parents, actually, I list the, the apartments of my father in Rio and Cayoba, and my sister lives in Paris. And uh, so I'm not directly the host, but actually I do the whole thing for them. And I'm working it directly now as a, an expert host. No? Yeah, yeah I, um, I've been hosting in uh, Astoria, Queens for two years and change. And I, I've been very involved uh, with, um, with pushing Airbnb to be legalized and also to um, I've been very involved uh, within the community uh, for those two years. I've I've come to realize and to and to uh, get you know, really amazing people uh, that have very unique stories and um, something that I'm very very passionate about. All right. So um, I don't know if Mark is going to join us. Um, Me too. Mar Lou, is it your room? I don't know. All right. No. So why don't we just start? We we're just gonna do something very simple. We're gonna do a little kitchen table. This is Maria Luisa's great suggestion earlier yeah. the rehearsal, and we just each host is gonna tell a story, something that reflects about hosting and something that could be of value for you guys. So and women, most women. So please, um, Lou or Maria Luisa, please. Yeah, if I can start. I would like to tell my experience when I started with Airbnb, um, like four years or five years ago. I did every mistake you can imagine. 
I, I was used to uh, listing the, the place of my father in, at uh, home away. It's a completely different system. And uh, <clears throat> first I didn't update my calendar because I thought people, even if my, my house is not free, they at least they will see my apartment and maybe they think about it later. I did not really realize how irritating it is to think, to see that the calendar is available, that the dates are available, and in the end it's not. Another mistake I did was if I received the request and I, I knew, oh, okay, these dates are not free, I just didn't respond. <laughs> I just let it expire. At that time, there wasn't this 24 hours uh, clock ticking there. The, I don't, I'm not sure there were punishments. And, oh, terrible. I remember having like 30 requests not answered in my, in my answering, in, in my dashboard. It was terrible. And the third thing was to try to close the, try to close the, the, the rental outside Airbnb. Because I thought, ah, oh, these fees are too much. And I didn't realize that doing so, you don't pay the fees maybe, but also you give up every advantage that Airbnb offers to the hosts and to the guests. So I'm a converted so I preach nowadays. And I, I really uh, advise to every beginner that something like this crosses their minds, really take a look how the system is different and it's good that it's different. Okay. Thank you, Luis. Lou? Um, one of the very, very first times that I hosted, um, well, when I started hosting, I, um, I had a flexible cancellation policy uh, because I wanted to be cool and understanding and I felt like, well, if you're flexible, um, you're going to attract more people and uh, uh, your, your place is going to have a higher market ability. But in reality, uh, I realized that um, it puts you like in a very tough situation because people start canceling because they, they can have the penalty um, as long as they do it within 24 hours. So I realized this very quickly when I really went out of my way to um, host, um, host a person. I even found him an apartment in the city. And then uh, he decided to uh, cancel his uh, two-week reservation two days in because he, he had already found another place. Mm -hmm. So I realized right away that uh, the best way to go about it is to if you have a strict cancellation policy, to really establish rules um, and more than anything, your boundaries. And, and to have a, a cancellation policy as strict or moderate is the first way to go about doing that. Yeah, um, just, uh, yeah. yeah. I, and I told you this about uh, your computer that is giving me feedback. Because we, we heard you when you were talking also. Okay. So we, and, and I totally understand when we, you know, I started out a million years ago, five years ago, um, it, there were not all these rules and regulations and that you have to answer in 24 hours or not to get off the system. And I realized very quickly on that whoever, whichever guest requested to get out of the system or to go out of um, the Airbnb work, they were a trouble guest. <laughs> I'm gonna say nine out of you know ten out of ten. They became somebody that were not satisfied with whatever you gave them. That they always wanted more. That they were a little bit too needy um, because they felt entitled. It was sort of like this. Oh, I don't want to pay the fees and things like that. But those fees protect us. So it's best. And I'm not saying that I don't go out of the system now. But I only go out with recurring guests. I have to make sure that they have at least the first or second or two. Um, bookings go through Airbnb or through Flipkey, which is my other site where I'm at, and then you know I'm I'm okay if they contact me and if they guess. Um, someone had asked a question about how do you uh, you email your your previous guests and it, you get their email address. I request that information as part of my requirements. Where I request, I mean I ask for it. Sometimes they give it to me. Sometimes they don't, and it's okay if they don't. Um, so, you know, we we do ask for information that sometimes Airbnb might be frowned upon, but 
look, sometimes people do not look at Airbnb emails, but they'll look at their personal email. You know, sometimes you like ask them questions on their personal email and they just don't respond, and then you have to like nudge them a little bit. So, so why don't we just um, open up the the plate for questions? I mean, do you guys have any specific hosting insight tips? I mean, you get questions, and what are the questions that you always get asked? From I'm not listening very well now. I'm not hearing you any, anymore so well. It sounds like an echo. Yeah, I hear an echo. But now it's better. Okay. I let me just get myself out. That's better now. No, it's better now. Yeah, I don't know why. Oh. Hello. That's much better. All right. A little. Um, well, no. I'm there. telling you. I'm telling you, it's your computer. My computer. Get on a headphone. Hmm. Get on your head. Get on a headphone, please. Because we um. Heard it also when you were <laughs> All right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So let's start with some. Um. Do you have any? Insider tip for the attendees that are here so far. Um, I can't hear you very well. Okay, can you hear me there? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Um, I think that uh, one of the most important things that, uh, or one of the most common things that people request or ask is um, how to go about. Um, and we spoke about this earlier day, you, Maria, uh, Mark, and I, uh, how to go about increasing your visibility uh, or your listings visibility. And um, that's, a, that's a very big one. And you can talk about it for hours and hours. And Airbnb um, endorses that uh, you have um, Instant Book. Uh, they push for Instant Book. And I'm not in a position to say that's not a good thing or that's a or that's a bad thing. I but um, I understand that some people are not fully comfortable with that, and I think that a bit a very good way to go around that is by updating your calendar on a, on a regular basis, on a daily basis, by having professional photographs. Um, the most important one, I think, is pricing very competitively. So see what everyone in, in your neighborhood is charging, and maybe charge a dollar or two less. And one or two dollars will make a big difference. And let me touch on that. Last year, um, in my place, I was charging. At one point, I was charging um, forty-seven dollars a night, and I was getting two hundred messages um, a month. Um, I tweaked that, and I decided to go to forty-nine, and then my messages dropped down to uh, less than fifty in the course of a month. So you have to be extremely aware. Of what uh what one two three dollars will do to your listing? Mm. Yeah. Yes, I agree. I think the price is the factor. If you're not getting requests, give a good discount till you have more stars, till you have uh, uh, reviews, and this will make a huge difference. Yeah. Yeah, and and look for me, I, uh, I I'm consider my prices. And especially one of my listings, the one that shares with me, it's a little bit on the lower side than others. But I also think it's expectations, and and we do get reviewed on value, and value is such a, a weird category because it's it's subjective to the person. It's it's like you know what do you consider value, and did I get value on what the price for what I got, what I paid, and what I received? Um, and I charge ninety nine dollars a night uh, for the first guest on the place that shares with me because it shares with me. But it get, they get a private bedroom, they get a private living room, and I could probably go a little higher. But I I need to I what I do is I I play it against my pricing and that I do need to be bought. And and really you know if I mean and mind you I I play with the pricing because. Three months ahead, like in September, the price is up to 109 on the week and 119 on the weekends and things like that. But I start playing and lowering the prices and going up and down and things like that. And also, Airbnb platform wants to see you be active on your platform, change different things, move photos around, 
make sure that your captions are clear. Um, one of the biggest issues is, you know, and I'm always surprised when a host is complaining about communication. It, I mean, it's like, I don't know how you guys, I mean, if este, Luisa and Maria Luisa and, and Lou, if you guys have, have you guys ever stayed at Airbnb places? Yes. Yeah. All the time. All the time. Yeah. Yeah. Since I mean, yeah. And do, do you feel how was the communication or how was like checking process? Do you have questions? Ah, uh, it was. Yeah, for me, it's a big lesson when I go as a guest. That's where I watch what I have to do when I am a when I am a host. It's really some people are so nice; they react immediately. They ask about what you need. They really follow through. It's wonderful. You really think that you're relating to a person, and this person cares. This is where you know every apartment will get me. <laughs> every host will get me when they give me this sensation. Yeah, Lou. Um, yeah, I mean, this year I've I stayed at uh, ten different places so far, and um, I um, I think that there is like a big difference between those people who reply right away, who communicate, who give you really really good directions uh, uh, as to how to get to their place, who um, who are very attentive to to everything and all your needs and potential needs, whereas there are other hosts who I've I messaged people and then they message me three days later saying like, do you still want to stay with us or, or uh, like they're really out to lunch. Yeah, I feel the same way. Yeah. I, I was looking for places to for this trip in Massachusetts and it was like, okay, guys, you have to respond a little quicker than 48 hours, or with the whole thing of like not telling you, oh, the calendar is not up today. Why? Why is is it your calendar? Why are those days not available? Um, you know, and, and if, like, I'm looking for places for the trip in Paris, and people are like, oh, we don't, excuse me, we're not accepting um, bookings so ahead of time. And I'm like, block your freaking calendar. You could just do that. Just go to settings and block your calendar saying, I'm not accepting bookings for, you know, ahead of three months or something like that, if that's what you want. Um, yeah, I think communication is one of the biggest things. I was just reading on a group, somebody that complained she received a last minute booking where a person, you know, it was for the same day arrival. So it was sort of like, I guess somebody was traveling and they were arriving. And she was painting um, in, her, in her listing. But she approved the list. She approved the booking. And the person was complaining because it smelled like paint. And, you know, my question to her was like, did you tell them? Did you tell them that you were painting just before they arrived? Because <laughs> they probably would have stayed someplace else. You know, it's like you, I mean, you have to tell the guests whenever there's something out of the norm or, or even when whatever the norm is, um, if you have something that, that's, that will trigger a question from your, your guests, you have to inform them. Yeah. yeah. Communication is key. All right, so why don't we, yes, the, the, the webinar is still here. Um, and it will be, I'm sorry, there's a few people that are having connection issues and I don't understand why because we can hear each other and other people can. Um, the webinar is on and we are talking. Um, so let's get to some of the questions. I guess there's still some people that are in the group. Um, we still have like about uh, 14 people and just because they're having um, issues. I don't know why they're having issues. I'm sorry. Um, so let's get questions in. One of the questions that they had was, well, um, did, do you guys know what's the difference between Airbnb recommend the pricing and beyond pricing? Um, do you know anything about that recommend the pricing? And are you using that tool? Um, from my side, I'm not using it at all. I don't think, I think it's a machine that takes some average divides and, and comes in a, in a market like in Rio, for instance, it's useless. It's really, uh, the location in Rio is really very specific depending on where you are and you cannot just generalize and I, I find it very unhelpful. I'm curious, I always take a look and say, ah, maybe this is okay. Sometimes it's below, sometimes it's higher. I don't really see a logic on that. I, I think location in, in, in um, real estate business is location and 
depending on the location, can have a terrible apartment at, at one in one block from the beach, and it will be much more expensive than a great apartment three blocks from the beach. That's, yeah. You know, yeah. That's totally, totally understand. What about you, Luke? Do you use the any other pricing recos? I do use it, um, and I do encourage people to use it in big cities, uh, in certain big cities. So obviously not in Rio, like it doesn't work for every city, but uh, in a lot of cities like New York City, San Francisco, LA, it is perfect for it. And although you will be, uh, you have to be mi uh, mindful that um, it's algorithm, it's it tends to price lower than you would otherwise price, but um, I've been surprised in that it tells me oftentimes that I should actually be pricing my listing um, a little bit higher, or um, it's, um, it's gotten me like um, a lot of um, a lot of messages as a result. So um, I think that it's a work in progress. Yeah, I haven't used their, their list of um, pricing, but I do look at it. I, I see what they are at, and sometimes they're asking me for to lower my pricing than more than what I have, like a lot lower. Like for the the private to where my apartment, my original price starts like 179 and he's asking me to put it in at 123 And I'm like, are you crazy? <laughs> Uh, uh, you know, a private two bedroom apartment in Brooklyn for $123. That's a bedroom. Yeah. Um, but I do look at it in glance and, and sort of play with it, but do not really use it on my pricing um, algorithms or, or my calendar. Mm -hmm. um, so another question, and, and I'm sorry, people are having problem connecting. We're having technical issues, and like the echo. <laughs> the echo is bad. Um, we had a question about sheets um, and how many extra towels do you handle per person. He um, he had a party of four people. How do you handle all the extra towels and sheets? He had four people. They use eight towels. Um, what have you guys used in the past? You well, have. I think you have to ask, uh, and you have to offer. So, and by that I mean you give people say one to tells per person and then you tell them if you need more let me know but I also cannot give you 20 tells like uh, uh, set boundaries but also let people know that if they need anything else to let you know and to let you know why. Mm -hmm. Well I I have a completely different experience also because maybe the two apartments that we rent in Brazil they are for like 10 to 12 people. Wow. And it is a huge investment. We have just a wardrobe <laughs> to keep the towels and the sheets. And every time I go to the States, I buy. I say, please buy some sheets. <laughs> because it's cheaper there. And I, my rule of thumb is one, one set of towels and sheets per week. And if the person is going to stay for a month, I give two, well, we have a washing machine. It, everything dries, a, a place to dry. I mean, it's a, the whole structure as if you really live there. And uh, I, there was a point that we gave a discount if the persons would bring their own towels, for instance, because it's, it's an inferno. And in Rio now, uh, I, 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 am, I, I added a fee because we, we have it cleaned in a, in a, in a laundry service. Uh, we just charge a little bit more. Mm -hmm. But then in Carnival, like New Year's Eve, you cannot find a place that will, I mean, all the, uh, 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 this is tip in Rio, open a service for laundry and for Airbnb apartments. It's a big problem, a big problem. But we, we give one per week. But of course, if somebody asks, then we always can give more. Yeah, yeah what I do is I put a towel per bed per person. Um, including a hand towel and a washcloth, and then in their bedroom or uh, in their bathroom, the private apartment in the bathroom, I have then one set of towels extra per person, and then a few hand towels and a, huge, a, a few washcloths. Sometimes they go through it all, you know, which I'm like, damn people, but sometimes they don't. 
Um, so tests even use less than the amount of people they have. You know, like it seems like some people might use the same towel, um, a couple of different people. Um, because in the past, they will use it. I, I had a basket of clean towels on the side one day, and they just went through it and, like, used all the towels. And that was, like, me prepping for my next guest because I have a closet. I'm, you know, it's, it's – the whole house fits about nine people um, and almost sometimes ten. So I do have enough towels and sheets so that – I don't have to be rushing to do laundry when I have the next guest arriving the same day. So whenever you have turnover, same day in turnover, you want to make sure that you have a lot of towels and sheets. And also change them whenever, you know, they're not looking their best and things like that. But, yeah, believe me, I could do, like, a whole – I have a stack of sheets that I'm giving away to – um, to different facilities and things like that. And sometimes my friends take them, but now they're just tired of way too many sheets. Yeah, we give to a, to a, um, a home for old people. Yeah, exactly. Because, I mean, they, they, they're good enough for people, but they're just not good enough for your guest. Yeah, but, I, you know, I also think this of, of also me as a guest, if I go to a hotel nowadays, you don't, don't just throw the towel on the floor, on the floor and want to have your bed sheet and everything change every night. Or It doesn't happen like this anymore. It's also ecologically speaking. If in my house, I'm a little bit, oh, I'm a Brazilian. We take showers <laughs> three times a day if you, if you let. I have one set of towels for each person and, hand, of course, for the hands and, and washcloth a week. And if you're in Rio, you need also a towel for the beach and this kind of thing. And I think it's really... A, I've tried to teach a little bit also. I would never leave like my whole wardrobe full of to of towels there just like that because you can be sure they would be all used <laughs> in the end of the period. I yeah. would never do that. Yeah. No, no, believe me. They, they, I mean, like, I have, like, some kind of cute towels design um, that the designer put in the bathroom, and people use those, too. They'll... They'll take whatever towels they find. It's like, ah, towels, yay! Um, the, we're still having technical issues. People are sort of like in and out um, and not able to feel us or hear us. And some people have gone out of the webinar because of it. Um, I've, I've given them some emergency links and things like that. And I'm sorry we are having... Um, so let me see if we could get more questions. We had some questions earlier from Marie. And what her questions was, what is the um, what is the best way for finding out about convention and business events coming to an area that might provide an opportunity for bookings and or overflow? Do you guys know anything about that? Um, wait. So um, you mean you mean about Airbnb events or? No, I think she's talking about like let's say conventions in their in their town and things like that that are coming up so so you could align yourself with them and offer spaces to your home. I guess it's like a more business. I mean, um, Airbnb has um, has a business division that caters to businesses, and uh, you can um, you can you can put your list in through uh, right there. But it has to like uh, fit a certain criteria, um, so you can go like into the help center and like you, you can type in Airbnb business and like it will it will pop up. Yeah, and on the business division, uh, what um, Airbnb does is you have to have a private listing for them to put you on that pl on that platform. Um, so they don't put places that it's a private bedroom or that you share on that business division, by the way. Um, yeah, I, have a, I, I, have a, I have a suggestion. Um, actually, in, I mean, in Rio, it's really quite black and white, the times that are really uh, full and all this. But uh, if I think about Cologne, I lived many years in Cologne, there is the Messe, which is the, the fair, and uh, I would uh, use the internet but really like crazy, you put the name of your town and put convention and put um, um, end of the year or how do you say graduation and all this because it's all over the internet and if I see Cologne has a huge um, um, 
room markets to rent because of this message. There, every week, it's something else. It's about food. It's about computer games. It's about, and you can find out in the internet. I would Google the name of your town and convention and go after it, and the year. And the year, yes. Yeah, and you could also check your convention centers, and they usually have a calendar of events that yes. are coming up. Yes. Um, and you could contact the the person that's in charge of the bookings and things like that. I mean, you got to remember they have a liaison with hotels. Um, but you know, the question is, look, people that are coming for conferences, uh, coming for business, have different needs than tourists. So you have to make sure that you are targeting them and things like that. They want to be closer to where the convention is at. Um, so if you live if you live near a convention center, that's that's a good thing, um, because they don't want to have to travel half an hour to go to a convention. You know, because sometimes they stay late and things like that. So you, so th that's why the hotels tend to be um, a better thing for for places like for um, host for guests that are coming for that. I have um, another idea. I have another suggestion. It just occurred to me. There. In cities like Rio, for instance, where there are exchange students, where there are many students, or Lisbon, or Lisbon, I don't know, in the, in the States, of course, there must be this. Exchange students come for, university students, come for a semester, for three months. And the universities, they have like a board, a, a, a blackboard, or they have a contact person for rooms for those students. So if you have an university close to your area, that by chance has this kind of it, and they are normally very well behaved because the students interna that internationally go and come. Normally, they are the best ones, and we do this a lot. And I remember with Georgia University, we had the person there that we contact directly for the students to to find an apartment in Rio. So this is also something I can. All right. Um. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a good idea. Um, the, and then also, you could post. I mean, I mean, if you have postcards of your space, you could put put them up in different places. Um, I I live in a in an area that I get a lot of grandparents, which I totally adore as guests. And so you have to just you know make sure that you have different things for them and for them to be able to. You know, for them to take postcards or business cards or things like that, you can post it, put them up on your laundromat. You do not put your address on it. That would be my recommendation. Hopefully, you have a website for your listing. And if you don't, we are going to do a webinar teaching you guys how to do a website for your listing. And something simple that it will send you straight to your Airbnb listing. But like that, you could tell them, hey, come to the Canyon Vista Casita. Um, and, and it's a lot easier than going to airbnb.com slash room slash listing number and things like that. Um, I don't know what is happening with the platform. I'm, I'm trying to click on the um, on the on the chat. Um, have you guys have any luck, Lou and Maria Luisa, on the chat at all? Because I keep posting, and I think they're just oh, talking about the sorry, same. Sorry, my chat was not even open. Yeah. <laughs> I I cannot see the chat. At all. I, I see the chat, but I don't see anything on it. Yeah, it says this feature is disabled. That's so kind of weird. Because I'm, I'm on. All right, look, guys. I don't think they're able to really see us. So this is going to go uh, on the side anyway because it's recorded, including this echo. <laughs> and, um, you know, and I'm sorry that it seems like we've had, like, Murphy's Law. <laughs> Yeah, that's why Murphy's Law. <laughs> yeah, we just had. Um, oh, I guess Kimberly can hear me. Kimberly, um, do you guys have any questions? I see the chat, and I could see you guys. You talking to each other. Um, do you guys have any questions? Anything that we could answer? We're already forty minutes into the webinar, um, and I just want to make sure that. Uh, Ala, Alia had talked about that she doesn't have space to store towels because she lives in New York City. You know what? Underneath the um, your beds, you get those clear plastic bins that fit, and you could store a lot of things in there. Believe me, or I, I even like use you know those bags that you could like um, vacuum out the air. Oh my I god! You, you go to Bed Bath and Beyond with a twenty percent off coupon, and you are golden. I am. Um, <laughs> I collect the coupons. Oh, so you're the, you're the coupon collector, Lou. Oh, um, like that 20% coupon, I have no shame in admitting that. 
Oh my God! Please, when when was it? Target in, in January had a twenty five dollars off for every hundred dollars that you spent. So what I did was like I spent a hundred, and then at the same line I just spent another hundred. I was like, here's for twenty five dollars, and here's twenty five dollars, because you know, and I stacked up my towels for for the year, um, and some sheets. Nice. Yeah, you know, but I love every I, I love Bed Bath and Beyond. It's just so expensive. You gotta go there, and you gotta go to that session of like as is, you know, the sales session. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um so I don't see seventy five did I share my name? Somebody's talking about seventy five million dollars. Um Maria Luisa and Lou, um I'm so sorry we're having so much so many technical issues, but you know, hopefully we'll do it this again in the future. And yes. now that we have everybody's blessings <laughs> it, it will not be this painful um, and we will be able to to have a longer conversation with the team. Um, again, in July, I'm going to have a, a different webinar. It's going to be about a product that I'm creating for all the hosts that they'll be able to utilize, and it will save them time. It will stop questions from your guests. You're going to say, oh, my God, how have I lived without this? <laughs> Unless you already have it and you're already using it. But we will talk about it a little later in July, and in my next webinar, it will be all about that. Is it the iPhone 6? Uh, yeah, sure. I'm giving away an iPhone 6. Not. Mm -hmm. um, Lou and Maria Luisa, muchas gracias for being here and for that. sharing your time with, even if they cannot hear us as well. Um, but we, this will be recorded. It will be on YouTube. It will be on my site and everything else. And Thank you. You're welcome. It was a pleasure. Right. Anytime. Lou, any parting words? Oh, I said. Oh, I said bye. Okay. <laughs> yeah. There All you right, go. Bye, guys. I'll see you guys soon. Yeah. Anytime. Thank you.